Good morning, church family. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and uh, all of the fathers to be. All of the fathers remembering all of our fathers who have gone on before us too today. One of the most important things, well, I, I, maybe I'm just going to say in my opinion, one of the most important things uh, for men and also for women in our world today is to actually have some wisdom. And uh, this topic of wisdom it, it, it's not really that common. In fact, like there's not a lot of people you can't really, if you know of a podcast that's all about wisdom, please send it to me. But usually those are not the things that people are talking about today in our world. And I think one of the very most important things for Christians is that we have wisdom to apply to an ever-changing world around us. And all I really have to say about that is uh, AI Everybody knows what AI is, artificial intelligence. You're interacting with it every day. And we actually need wisdom of what is too far, what is not far enough, and how do we engage with that. And and in order to do that, we need wisdom. Our education system for our kids is way different today. It's just a regurgitation system of education. We need wisdom to be able to interact with people. Wisdom is not regurgitation. Wisdom is actually knowing knowledge and actually how to apply it. So, if that is our world, and those are the things that are happening in the world, do you, do we, know how to think? How to apply wisdom in the situations that we find ourselves in? It's not very often that you hear somebody say, hey, I know a wise person. But what we really need is wisdom. To think is to reveal the glory of God. So today, we're going to look at what it actually means to recapture this idea of our minds and using our minds the way God actually intended. God never said, check your mind at the door when you're doing anything. God actually wants us to engage and use wisdom to make decisions in our life with our kids, with our family. He wants us to engage with thinking. And I want to challenge us this morning, and really I'm challenging the men because I think the men need to lead in this. Men, you need to be wise. You need to be thinking. Thinking constructively. Thinking uh, Critically thinking ahead, planning, and using your mind to combat this world that we live in today. And part of how we do that is having the mind of Christ. Now, how we get there is actually difficult for us. And it's not only difficult for, our, for the men, it's also difficult for women to get to this place of thinking with wisdom. So this morning, we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 3. We're going to look at Solomon. And we're really talking about three things that I need, that you need, to have a wise mind. And if you would commit today, for the rest of your life, to these three things that we're going to talk about this morning that we see in Solomon. And God actually was like, Solomon, this is really good that you're doing this. But if we would commit as an individual to, I'm going to just live these three things out for the rest of my life, there's a promise here that God will be able to say, because we're not really worried about what other people say, but we're really concerned about what God says, that we would be wise. 
So turn with me over to 1 Kings chapter 3, and I'm going to read uh, from uh, verse 3 through to verse 14. And it just says this, Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in upright of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this great people? Verse 10, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had to ask this. And God said to him, because you have asked for this and have not asked yourself for long life or riches or life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I will now do according to your word. Behold, I will give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all of your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. That's a pretty awesome dream, eh? Solomon Uh, has this experience with God where God asks him what he would like. And there's three things that were needed for Solomon to really get to this place where he's going to make this kind of request. And the first thing that we see right off the bat as he's talking to God is this humble inadequacy. Look at at verse 7. It says, and now, O Lord, my God, you have made your king, your servant king in place of my David father, or my father, (laughs) of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go in or how to go out. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you've chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted in multitude. He fully understands what he's about to do. He fully understands that he is called to govern, to lead this group of people. But yet he's humble about it. You see, for Solomon, the reality of his responsibility actually makes him humble. Many of us have all kinds of responsibilities today. Sometimes those responsibilities do not make us humble. In fact, we look at ourselves, given the responsibilities that we have, and sometimes go, you know what? I, I'm fully capable of doing this. That's not humble inadequacy. But what we see here is that he realized the difficulties that were lying ahead of him. He didn't have this overinflated view of himself. And the proud are just not wise. You see, Solomon, 
Solomon embraced this inadequacy that he saw in his life. I can't do this. Many times when we see this kind of inadequacy around us, we go, I can't do this. I'm just going to run away from it. And we go in the opposite direction. And that's not, that's not wise either. Because those responsibilities just come right after you. I'm just, just an example. You know, you forget to pay a bill and you're like, well, we don't have enough money and I, I can't pay this bill. And so instead of facing it, you run from this responsibility. And the next thing you know, you might get a break for a couple of weeks, but then the collection guy's calling. You see, inadequacy should not, but it does, inadequacy should not cause us to run from our responsibility. What inadequacy, if it's humble, this is what it does. Humble inadequacy looks at your responsibility that is overwhelming and humbles themselves and takes the responsibility. That's exactly what Solomon did. He didn't say, you know what, this is just too much for me. I'm just a child, I can't do this. I don't want the responsibility. I'm going to leave it alone and run in the other direction. That's not humble inadequacy at all. That's just plain old self-pity and inadequacy. And really, what self-pity is, is just the other side of pride. In our world today, and it doesn't really matter what age either, You can see it in a 50-year-old. You can see it in a 20-year-old. You can see it in a 70-year-old. But many people do not have this humility to embrace the responsibility and declare that they can't do this. They can't do it on their own. And that's the reason why we don't have a lot of wise people. And that's the reason why I'm not wise. It's the reason why you're not wise because we cannot take this first step that Solomon was able to take in acknowledging that he's, he has this responsibility. But he's inadequate. But yet he's not going to run from it. He's just going to humble himself in it. Now, I know that every single one of us has responsibilities. They might be a a lot of responsibility, depending on your situation. Or you might have a little bit of responsibility. But we all have responsibility. And what is required in order to move us, because these are three things that we need to have this kind of wisdom that Solomon had, the first thing that we just need is this humble inadequacy. And it really is, it's a choice of our heart, it's a decision that we make where we decide to just be humbly inadequate. Jesus was this way. Jesus came into this world being fully capable of leading the world. Not wanting to give up everything that the Father, that He had with the Father in heaven, and then came and took on the appearance of man. He humbled Himself. We need that same kind of attitude. Here's the second, here's the second thing. Because wisdom starts from this place of humble inadequacy is that we need to have prayer for an understanding mind. So this, so, so this is Solomon. He's, he's in this place. He recognizes his responsibilities. He's humble about all of the stuff around him. And then he says to God, after God has asked him, verse 9, give your servant therefore 
He says, because I'm like this, because I'm, this is too much for me, because I'm overwhelmed, but I'm not running from my overwhelmness. Give me an understanding mind. Stop there for a minute. First of all, he's praying. He's asking God. He's, he's answering God's question as God comes to him in a dream. God has come to you. He's already come to you through His Word and He said, what do you need? What do you need today to get through today? What do you need to get through the week? What do you need to get through the year? God has already, in His Word, said that to us. You don't need Him to come to you in a dream or some kind of experience for that to happen. We read about it in His Word. He says, come unto Me, all you who are what? Heavy laden? And I will give you rest? Learn of Me? He's already said this to us. So we don't need this new invitation because he's already said it so we just need to come to him praying for an understanding mind asking him for this understanding mind so let me ask you this question when was the last time in your prayer life that you actually said god would you give me an understanding mind Now, what is an understanding mind? I think that's important to sort of unpack what he's actually asking for. He's asking for understanding. He's not asking for knowledge. To understand means to understand people. To understand how they think to understand problems, to understand language, to understand how things work, to understand himself in who he is. To not be confused, but to have an understanding, a knowledge about everything that is around him. And he asks that of his mind, his capacity to think, to look at the world around him and go, you know what? I get this. I understand this. So, is that a normal part of your prayer life? No? Well, you're not going to be wise. Yes, it is a part of your prayer life, Great, then you will be wise. You've got this humble inadequacy where you're recognizing I, I, this responsibility that I have in front of me is just overwhelming for me. But I admit that and I've, I've come to God. I'm going to cast my cares on Him. I'm going to ask Him to give me this understanding mind. And I'm going to do it. Now, I would encourage you if you haven't already, is to add this kind of a prayer, just asking God to give you an understanding mind to your prayer life. And if, you, if, if this is not something that you pray on a regular basis, it really needs to be, okay? Because this is the thing that is sort of builds on the humility where we're asking God, the God who's our Father, who wants to give us the kingdom, who wants to take care of us and provide for us, would He not want to give this beautiful gift of an understanding mind to His children? Yes, He would. But His children need to ask. And if we're not asking, we're not going to be wise. So let me encourage you this morning to ask and to just decide, you know what, I'm going to live my life being serious about this. I'm going to live my life in this humility, asking God for an understanding mind. Now there's another thing that we need. It's not just humility and just just an understanding mind. We need something more than that, and that is 
discernment, okay? Here's the third thing we need to have a wise mind, and that is discerning between good and evil. Now, this might shock you, okay? It just might shock you. But there is only good and evil, okay? I'm going to say that again. There is only good or evil. Now, this is actually a massive problem in our world today, in our thinking and how we relate to things. Because we've come to the conclusion that there are some things that are not as bad as other things. I use the phrase uh, degrees of evil or degrees of good. And we've come quite comfortable thinking about, well, that's really bad, but then this over here is not so bad. Well, that's just relativism, okay? It's just relativism. You and I need desperately the ability to discern between good and evil. Okay? Not good and bad. Good and evil. And this is incredibly important to bring us to this place of wisdom. Okay? So if we're looking at the world around us and we're trying to navigate life and do all of the things that we're supposed to do in terms of responsibilities to our families and our job places, our friends, our spouses, all of that stuff, then we need to be able to discern good, what is good, and what is evil. There's no gray area. For many of us, we live in the gray. But what I'm saying here, and really what God is also saying, and Solomon is saying, I need to be able to know what is good and what is actually evil. Because this is what he says as we continue reading in verse 9. He says, I want, uh, Give me therefore this understanding mind, to govern your people, and then he says, that I may discern between good and evil. He he doesn't say between, you know, the, the things that are easy. He says it's black or it's white. Good or evil. Now I know I know this concept kind of bugs some of us. Because not all of us think black and white. It's right or it's wrong. It's good or it's evil. But from God's perspective, that's exactly how this world operates. We're either in this camp of being good where we're pleasing God, or we're not in that camp, we're in this other camp, which is evil. The things that are going on in our world, they're either good or they're evil. And not only do we need to be able to see these things from God's perspective of what is good and what is evil, we need the discernment to tell the difference. And I think this is incredibly true in our world because We live in a world where what was right is now wrong and what was wrong is now right. And all of this, and and you you may not agree with me with here, but all of this is the working of Satan to confuse the minds of people so that they can't see the, the holiness of God, the goodness of God, and who God is in the midst of this. And that's one of the reasons why we need a discerning mind, an understanding mind, the wisdom to know the difference between good and evil. And so we can read a passage like this. We can look at this and we go, you know, Solomon was so great. He was so wise. It's great. He still did some stupid things. But at least 
he was wise in his stupidity. Discernment is perceiving the difference between two things. And I think it would be a great exercise if you're here today with someone that you know and is a part of your family, have this discussion. What do you think is good? What do you think is evil? Go home and actually talk about that. If you're here by yourself and you don't have someone that is here that you live with, well, find somebody here in the room and go have coffee with them and say, hey, let's, let's talk about this. Let's understand the difference between good and evil because that's really what discerning is. It's one thing to say there's good and there's evil. There's a, it's a totally other thing to say, I know what the difference is. And this is exactly what Solomon wanted. He wanted the capacity to discern between good and evil. Let me define for you what is good to help us move in this direction. And that is God. Okay? There is Scripture verse, there is none good but God. You see, God defines what is good. And we only know evil in the light of what is good. You following me? Let me just use an illustration so that you're sticking with me here. How do we know it's dark? Because there's no light. When there is light, it is not dark. Okay, just that simple. It's the same thing with good and evil. We don't know evil when there is no good. But as soon as good shows up, it's like, oh, now I know that that's evil. We need to immerse ourselves in the goodness of God. In all of God's goodness and understand that God Himself is just good. And so what that means is that I understand Him. I understand who He is and what He means and how He loves me and, and that my salvation is tied up in Jesus and, and there's a goodness that just flows out of God because of His provision for creation and, and my life and how He takes care of us. He's just good. And from that place of understanding goodness and good, I can then see evil. So make it really clear, God is good because He takes care of His children. What is evil is then the opposite of that, which is someone not taking care of their children. And there's no degrees here. You're either taking care of your children or you're not taking care of your children. Okay? And we could go through all of, we could study all of the goodness of God and, and who God is in His goodness and then just see the opposite of that and all of the sudden we see the difference and discern, distinguish between good and evil. Again, We're not going to be wise if we can't have this kind of discernment between good and evil. And in our world today, what's happened, this is like, it's just so, we've lost this because we've turned so far as a culture in Canada and the West, we've turned so far away from God that we're not even able to discuss these things, to talk about them or to think about them. And in fact, if you were trying to have somebody, if you want, you can try this this week, to try and have a discussion with somebody in your workplace that's not a Christian about the difference between good and evil. Love to hear how those conversations went. You see, wisdom comes from God. 
you can't have a wise person or a wise world or a wise country or a wise group of people unless they are getting that wisdom from God. And the only way to do that is to be in this place we're talking about this morning where we're saying, hey, I recognize I've got this humble inadequacy. I, I need God. Would you give me? Would, would you give me an understanding mind? And would you also, at the same time as you give me this understanding mind, give me the capacity to discern between good and evil? And at the end, at the end of this prayer that Solomon prays, and again, this is all cloaked in this father-son relationship, the relationship that Solomon now has to God, that, who is the, the king and lord of lords of his people that Solomon is leading. He's like, I, I need this. I need this. And if we, if we can see that we need it too, and it really doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You need this. You need this in your life to have a mind that is wise. And this really is the mind of Christ. He was humble. He prayed to His heavenly Father all the time for understanding. And He continually prayed and asked God to give Him this discernment so that He could see what was good and evil. And He called out the evil on His days when He was here. And He affirmed the good. That's what He did. And as Christians... That is what our life is to look like. And if it's not looking like that, then we need to recapture this thing called wisdom. It would be wonderful as a church, as the Canadian church, to have a reputation of being a wise group of people. That all of a sudden, when things are out of sorts or all around us, people come to us and they say, you know what, you just seem to know how to deal with this. Could you help me? Because that's where this leads us to. So the challenge for the men here today, okay, so men, this is for you. Be wise. Okay, just be wise. Your wives are going to love you for this even more than they do already. Ladies, it's also for you. It's also for you to be wise. To have these same things. To have your mind renewed to think as Christ would think in our world today. And it starts with us just accepting who Jesus is as our Lord and Savior and following Him and following His ways all the days of our life. And I would guarantee, I, like, I'm, so, I'm so convinced of this. Like, it's like a guarantee in my mind. If you would do these things every day for the rest of your life, it doesn't matter how old you are, I guarantee you as you move on in life, you will be wise. You will just be wise. doesn't mean that life becomes easier it just means that you will be wise in handling the things that you come across in life why why do i say that because this is god's promise to us he's already asked you if you need anything just come to me <laughs> just come to the father come to daddy and I, I'll, I'll take care of it and so come to him so let me pray for us today let me pray that we would come to Him for this kind of wisdom in our life. That we would be known for this kind of wisdom. And that we would have this kind of wisdom to navigate through the things in our world today. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank You for uh, Your patience and willingness 
to meet us where we are. God, I thank you so much that you have actually told us to come to you, to climb up on uh, your knee as a father, as a dad, and make our requests known to you. Lord, we acknowledge that this world that we live in, the things that are happening are, are hard at times. And we don't maybe like the things that we see around us or the things that we're trying to deal with in our own life. Lord, would you bring us to this place of just a humble inadequacy where we're not running from responsibility but embracing the responsibility and asking you for help. God, I pray that each one of us would ask you continuously for an understanding mind and the capacity to discern between good and evil. Lord, it is those things that you have laid out for us in your word that describe the wise. So God, we ask for your wisdom to be able to live in this world, to represent you as we should, and to navigate the challenges of life. So God, I thank you for sending Jesus who humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, gave his life up for ours so that we could enjoy you forever and ever and ever. So God, we give you the glory because at the end of the day, it's all about you. It has nothing to do with us. It's all about you. So God, we thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness to us. And we pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen.